Jim said, my name is Simric Whitaker, and I've been a big brother for about four years. And the first thing I want to say to you is, welcome, brothers. And I don't say that on behalf of big brothers, big sisters. I say that because in speaking with the men at my table, and in speaking and looking around this room that's full of men, I see us all as being brothers in the fraternity of manhood. I want to take a moment to talk to you about why I became a big brother. And for me, it all started about four and a half years ago. I was going through a really hard time in life. I had drama at work, I had drama at school, I had drama with my woman. It seemed like the wheels were falling off the bus and I was having a hard time holding it all together. And I remember I was on my way to work at a red light and I started thinking, as a lot of times men tend to do, that if I knew then what I know now, it would all be different. And that made me wonder about all the mistakes I'd made in life. Not just my adult life, but in my young life too. I remember being a kid and playing by myself, as I often did. Maybe I was eight or nine years old. I found a shopping cart. I thought it'd be fun to jump in the shopping cart and roll it down the hill, which is fun until you hit that first little pebble or that little twig, and you get pitched forward out of the cart onto the pavement, and the cart flips over on top of you. And if anyone has ever done that, you know exactly what I mean. You probably have the scars to prove it. I remember the first time I decided I was going to give myself a haircut. My mom had done it for me all my life, and I wanted a certain style of flat tops, and that's how you know how old I am. And so I'd seen her do it a million times, but what I hadn't seen was how she put the guard on the clippers. The guard, for those of you who don't know clippers, controls how close to this head your hair gets cut. So without a guard, I made that first pass, and instead of touching my hair up, I shaved myself bald, about an inch and a half wide stripe on the right side of my head. I got laughed at a lot for that. I remember the time me and my brother were playing outside and we found an old car battery. And so we decided to grab the jump cables out of my mom's station wagon and play Frankenstein. That is an experience that you only do one time in your life ever again. I swear I still get muscle twitches every once in a while now. <laughs> now I've got a lot of the stories and anecdotes like that that are great for situations like this. They're funny. But I've got a lot of stories also that, that aren't funny. And we grew up poor, and I was very shy and awkward and introverted when I was younger. I remember being bullied because back then I was short, shorter than almost all the guys in my school and most of the girls too. I was skinny, bird-chested, pencil-necked. I was not athletic at all. And I started thinking about how my life would be different if the man I was today could go back and talk to the kid I was all those years ago. I wonder what it would be like if I had someone to kind of show me the way into the, the fraternity of manhood. As it was, my mom was, she was a single mom, she was working a lot of double shifts, and she slept during the day, so a lot of times me and my brother were left to our own devices. And I think that one of the things that I learned now that I didn't know back then is, I could have talked to my mom about some of these things, but either I was too proud or too ashamed. But more than that, I think that there are some things that boys can only learn from men. And that's the reason I became a big brother. Now, when I talk about mistakes, I'm still making them. And I'll tell you that for years, I thought about being a big brother but never pulled the trigger on it. Because I felt like I was still making too many mistakes. I hadn't made it yet. I, I, I idealized it as me getting to a certain place in my life where I was making a certain amount of money, had a certain way of life, and then I could step back and start giving back to the community. I still felt like I was kind of a mess, still making it up as I went along. But when we talk about mistakes, or at least when I talk about mistakes, what I'm really talking about are experiences. And the road to manhood is a long one, and sometimes it's really arduous. But in reality, it is paved with those experiences, hundreds and thousands of them that define manhood, not just me defining manhood for myself, but how manhood is defined for me as I go through life. I realize now that having had those experiences is what makes me a good big brother. And it's the same thing that makes all of you good candidates for becoming big brothers. Right now, <clears throat> someone at your table, someone in your life, thinks that you have the material to become someone who can mentor a young person. And I'll tell you that being a big brother is not about being a parent. It's about being an example. It's about being a friend to someone who doesn't have anything else to hold on to in their life. It could be that they're dealing with peer pressure issues. It could be that they're being bullied. 
and they can't talk to anybody about it because there's no one for them to turn to. But when you create these relationships with young people, and it might not be anything that you say directly, but just by being in their life, just by giving them an idea of a life that's different from what they already know, you're changing the life and you're changing the world for that young person. The first step in moving down that road is the information session. An information session is exactly what it sounds like. We're not selling Amway or timeshares here, guys. The program only works if you want to do it. We're not gonna to try to talk you into anything. You come to the information session and they're gonna tell you about how they only ask you to commit to four hours a month to spend with your little brother. Four hours a month. I'm gonna wager that most of us spend more time watching SportsCenter than that every month. They're gonna to talk to you about how the relationship you have with your little brother is again, not about being a parent. You're not there to discipline, you're there to be a friend. What you do is completely between you and your little brother. There's no script, there's no guideline, but you will be assigned a match support specialist and you'll be given access to, the big, access to the Big Brother's website where you can get tons of ideas for things to do. And more than anything, <clears throat> excuse me, what you'll learn from the information session is about the data that shows us that little boys and little girls who have mentors in their life are statistically proven to have better outcomes when it comes to those at-risk behaviors. We're talking about sex, we're talking about drug and alcohol abuse, we're talking about high school graduation rates. Having a mentor in their life, even if the mentor does nothing but show up every weekend, every other weekend, whatever the schedule you set for yourself is, having that relationship makes a difference. I'll tell you that you talk to a little person and you talk to them about, well, yeah, one time this girl broke up with me, but I did this. Then when they get broken up with, they handle a little bit differently. You talk to a young person about some time when you were getting bullied and how you stood up for those, themselves, <laughs> you stood up for yourself, then they internalize that and they start to stand up for themselves. You change their world just by sharing your life, sharing your experiences with this young person. So take a step just to find out more about what being a big brother is about. And I guarantee you that you go through this session, if you don't want to, be a big brother, you find like it's not a right fit for you right now, you walk out, no questions asked. We're not trying to sell you anything. This sells itself to the people who want to change the community. But we want to change the world of tomorrow. We need to start by changing the life of young people today. And each and every one of you can make a difference just as you are right now, just by showing up and being part of a, a life that's greater than your own. I want to leave you guys with a a quote, one of my favorite quotes from Frederick Douglass. He said that it's easier to rebuild strong children than to repair broken men. Think about that when you're filling this out. Now I'll turn it back to Jim.